Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abdullah Rothman and I'm a psychologist, uh, both practicing counselor, I have been for 15 years, and I have a PhD in psychology and my, my research is focused on Islamic psychology. I think at the very beginning, the thing that drew me into psychology was this notion of it being the study of the psyche. So the word psychology literally meaning the study of the psyche, and the psyche is thought of as the soul, so not just the mind. For me, it was never about the study of the mind or the brain or just the cognitive aspect of psychology, but really what drew me into it was that, to me, it felt like some, something as close to spiritual uh, spirituality within a secular academic world. Because this study of the soul was really about from my perspective, learning and studying for the purpose of the development of the soul. So actually the growth of the human being and understanding you know, these big questions of why we're here and where we're going and sort of what, what we're doing here. To me, this is what drew me into psychology. And the two, I would say from the beginning, I was always interested in the intersection of spirituality and psychology. So for that reason, I was more drawn to humanistic psychology and um, the, the integration of different spiritual traditions in understanding the human condition and what these spiritual traditions have to offer in terms of really making sense of the human predicament in relation to the development of the soul. In my study of psychology, because I was coming from this place of really understanding it or wanting to integrate spirituality into it, I was simultaneously studying lots of different spiritual traditions and religions. So part of that was reading about different religions, but also part of it was really interactive. I, I traveled the world and I lived with uh, different spiritual communities, studying these different traditions and from my, my reason for doing that was trying to understand what they offer in, in understanding this knowledge of the soul. And so in doing that, um, I had traveled the world to lots of different, different regions, different areas, but in different traditions. And Islam came onto my radar somewhat later on in that process where I was really looking at where, where do we find like a, a science of the soul? So something that really understanding this, this deeper inner aspect of the human being from within a spiritual paradigm or cosmology of how we understand the human condition. And Islam, really that's, what, that's how I discovered Islam. So I'm, I became Muslim what I was drawn to Islam was like learning to learn more about the study of the human being and this science of the soul. And I found that within Islam it was more detailed and more, I guess, articulated in a way that made sense, not only to me, but within the language and format of psychology, because there was this really rich, long history and tradition of ilm nafs or the, the science or the study of the soul. And so this is how I actually simultaneously found what we're calling Islamic psychology and also Islam as, as a path for me to follow as, as a spiritual path. The first time I came in contact with this notion of Islamic psychology was through people, not through books necessarily, because there wasn't a whole lot written on this topic. Um, and then, almost, I guess, serendipitously, or I, I very early on came into contact with Professor Malik Badri, who, had there been any sort of um, emergence of this field or, or, or recognition of Islamic psychology as a thing or as a field, it, it really was from his work um, and the books that he read, that he wrote in the late 1970s. I uh, met Professor Malik Badri, 
and had the opportunity to, to work close with, closely with him and study with him and his teachers. Um, and that's when it became more of a, uh, I was really immersed in this notion of Islamic psychology being, being a thing, whereas perhaps many people wouldn't necessarily consider it as an obvious connection or an obvious field. So early on in my career, I had discovered this really deep um, spiritual tradition of understanding the human being and psychology. And so I was starting to, I guess, do my own uh, form of integrating those things in. So the things that I was learning from my traditional study of Islam, but from within this lens of this development of the soul, and then my training in you could say Western or, or secular training of psychology and, and understanding how these can integrate into my practice because I was not just trained as a psychologist academically but as a, as a mental health counselor. And so immediately I went into getting licensed uh, as a therapist and was working in, in practice. At the beginning, not necessarily with Muslims, but as soon as I started working in private practice, it was clear that there was a huge need within the Muslim community for mental health services from a Muslim, from a Muslim person. That's what people were looking for, somebody that they felt they could relate to. And certainly there was a lot of Muslims doing psychotherapy from their training as psychologists from the West. Um, but not necessarily integrating the Islamic science of the soul into that approach. So often what would happen is you'd have an integration of some of the concepts, some of the language that we find in Islam, and some of the cultural nuances of how a Muslim understands themselves and psychology. But there was less of, a, of an understanding really of what is the, from within an Islamic paradigm, how do we understand what the human being is and then how would that change the way that you work in psychotherapy? And so from my uh, study with these scholars and for Professor Malik Badri early on, I was really learning to incorporate this stuff into my private practice and I was finding pretty early on that there was a... A, not only a big need, but a real enthusiasm for the work that I was doing in, in really helping people find within their connection to Islam, within their own deen, a way of not only understanding themselves better, but oftentimes understanding the deen better. So in my practice of working with the Muslim community and doing my own version of this integration of what I was learning with these scholars and practicing what I would call an Islamic approach to psychotherapy, uh, I realized that this was something that was really needed, that people were, not necessarily just my, my own approach, but just in general, this was like a, a missing link in the Ummah, I would say, in the community, that people were finding that they had this knowledge and love of their deen, and they had all these issues that they were struggling with in life, but they were not really understanding how to put these two things together. And somehow, which was sort of was fascinating to me, was that people hadn't made that link, that the, the religious knowledge and the religious practices are actually uh, for life, right? It's not that religion is over here and then we're supposed to struggle with life over here and and that those, don't, those two things don't intersect, but that actually the, the path within Islam and all of the things that we learn about even our uh, ibadah can often link to being the solutions for what, what, what we're looking for. And, and oftentimes what that meant was people's, people's uh, relationship to that is, oh, well, we'll just, if you just pray more, then the problems will go away instead of understanding that by turning inward into, which is something that we learn from this process of psychotherapy from the Western academia, is that that's really crucial and that's really needed to process your emotions, to understand, to turn inward. 
but that that's not something foreign to Islam. That really, what, what, what I was finding in my study of Islam was that so much, if not all, of those religious practices and, and uh, this religious knowledge was really going, uh, guiding somebody to be self-reflective and to do that work internally. And there was just sort of a missing link between understanding those two things, people understanding those as separate things. What I realized was that not only was this something missing sort of on a larger scale within the community understanding of Islam, but specifically with the community of Muslims doing psychotherapy, that there was a lot of people wanting to do this work, but really that that, that missing link was also there in the, the potential for where this, this two things could be brought together in something like psychotherapy within an Islamic framework. And what I was finding was that I had a lot of colleagues who are Muslim who are doing psychotherapy who weren't necessarily integrating this knowledge because they hadn't, they hadn't been taught how to do that. They realized that there was a, a place for it and they realized the need for it, but just there, there wasn't a framework or a structure for it. And at the same time, there was a lot of people around the world that I became aware of that were doing that but we're doing it sort of in isolation or in silos and trying to sort of haphazard, or not, I wouldn't say haphazardly, but ad hoc, do their own version of integrating Islam into psychotherapy. And whereas that is, that is great, and it's, you know, because there's a lot of creativity that comes out of that, I think there is some danger to that in that in order for it to really be Islamic, it has to be grounded within the tradition of the ulama, of how we understand Islam and all of the amazing tradition of how we, how we come to understand what, uh, what this knowledge means and how, it, how we're supposed to understand it, right? And within that, there's room for interpretation, but there are parameters. And so um, I sort of felt like both... A, there needs to be an incorporation of the, scholar, the scholar's input into how we understand psychology from an Islamic perspective, and that there needs to be more of an articulated framework for how we do that. And so I, after practicing uh, in psychotherapy for many years, for about a little over 10 years, just seeing clients, um, I realized it's this work needs to be done. And so a lot of the work that Professor Malik Badri had done was really quite broad and theoretical because at the time this was a very new, in the, in the 70s, this was a new concept of even just thinking of psychology from an Islamic framework. It was, it was thought of those, are, those two don't belong together. There's religion and then there's psychology. And so he was really bringing this together, but there hadn't yet really been a, a formal articulation of what that looks like. And so I felt the need for there to be some groundwork laid of, of getting towards something more like a theory of Islamic psychology. So my intention of going, when I went back to do my, after I had practiced for many years, after doing my master's, I went back to do a PhD in psychology and I focused my research on this uh, dedication of trying to get at a theoretical framework for Islamic psychology for the purpose of developing Islamic psychotherapy approaches. So my, my main intention with my research was to, like I said, to contribute towards laying a foundation for understanding Islamic psychology as a framework. Um, and I felt that that's a pretty it's a pretty big thing to try to accomplish and certainly you, that can't be done in one PhD but what I felt what was missing was sort of a really foundational level of building something from the ground up. Uh, Professor Malik Badri in some of his early work mentioned that what sometimes happens is that we have the, the approach to Islamization, 
is to sort of sprinkle Islamic language and principles onto something that's already the foundation is a Western conceptualization of something pretty foundational like philosophy or, you know, when we're talking about, we're not talking about science or economics in, with psychology and the type of psychology that I was interested in, which is the study of the soul, not necessarily neuropsychology. This is based on uh, a, a philosophical paradigm or epistemology, ontology. And so what he was saying is that you can't just take a decrepit building and paint it with a fresh coat of paint and, and in order to make it look fresh or new. And so this is oftentimes what would happen is people would put like an Islamic paint over a building to make it, to make psychology seem more Islamic or be more Islam friendly, but that the building and the foundation are still from this different epistemology, this different ontological view of the human being. Um, and so I felt like some of the work that needed to be done was really uh, and it's not about breaking down any buildings because there's a lot that's useful from, the, from, what, from what I learned in psychology and certainly what is available in the Western academia. Um, but really understanding from an Islamic paradigm how then do we understand psychology for the purpose of treatment diagnosis, these are going to be fundamentally different. And so starting from the ground up, even just looking at what is human nature is going to be a different, very different perspective from an Islamic uh, paradigm. And so then because of that, because it's so important for it to be grounded in um, the theological knowledge that we, that we get from the study of the Quran and the uh, Hadith, then it needs to have the, the input of the scholars who understand that knowledge. And what had happened previously is that most of the discussion around Islamic psychology over the past 40 years had involved psychologists whose main, uh, whose main expertise was in the area of psychology. Oftentimes they would have some understanding of Islam and have studied Islam, but that their psychologists bringing in the Islamic principles. And what I felt really needed to happen was that the community of scholars are the ones who are contributing to the foundation of how we understand the human being from an Islamic paradigm. And then the psychologist can help take that information and say, well, what makes sense mostly for working with people in a developmental process? Because that is the expertise of a, of a psychologist or more, more specifically a psychotherapist. And so the way that I structured my research was to do a grounded theory study which enabled me to bring in the input of these scholars. So the first uh, part of that research was to do a grounded theory study with 18 scholars from the Islamic tradition from different branches of knowledge. So some of them were um, scholars of Islamic philosophy, some of them were uh, scholars of Islamic law, some of them were more specifically focused on uh, the study of tasawwuf or the, the inner understandings of the science of the soul from an Islamic tradition perspective. And so what this did was bringing different input from the different branches of knowledge. Because when we talk about Islamic psychology, this isn't something that really existed as a thing within the Islamic tradition because it was something that was spread out within the uh, different studies of different branches of knowledge in Islam. And it wasn't really needed to single it out because we thought of things differently. There was more of an intact, integral community around Islam where people, when they're engaged with, people lived in communities where they had access to these people that held the knowledge, and there was a way of, of living this knowledge that was holistic. And so because of that, Islamic psychology existed in the Islamic tradition, uh, but spread out. 
And so now, in this modern day, we understand psychology as a discipline in and of itself. And that now makes sense to the contemporary psyche. From the contemporary mind, people think of psychology as a, as a discipline. And so then it becomes uh, necessary, I think, to, to extrapolate this knowledge from these different places within the Islamic tradition to then understand what Islam has to say about the understanding of the human being. And so what my, my, what my research focuses on was bringing the input of these scholars of defining what what even just the structure of the soul. So defining the human being not as just the self, where often in psychology we think of the self as the, the, the notion of ourselves that we project to the world that is based on just our experiences here in this life. Whereas from an Islamic paradigm, our trajectory as a person involves a soul beyond just that external self. And that soul existed before this life and will exist after this life. And so taking into account this much longer, wider trajectory of who, who the human being is, is, is directly going to impact then how we understand diagnosis, uh, assess, assessment, treatment. The whole thing is going to change based on what we are talking about when we're talking about the human being. So I think there's two, two main reasons why it's important for the average Muslim. One is that I think we need to get away from this stigma of mental health being something that is reserved just for people who have problems. And we really need to, as a community, embrace that everybody needs to do work on themselves and that we're all works in progress and that it's just a continuum. It's not necessarily those people who have mental health issues and then the normal people, but that there's a, there's a spectrum in between. And we need to embrace this idea of looking at ourselves and doing work on ourselves. The second reason is, is that I think from the study of Islamic psychology or understanding Islam through the lens of, of psychology, what I find that it does for people is that it really gives them a, a deeper insight into Islam, the religion of Islam, as a path for living life as a human being. And what it, what it can do for the average Muslim is to understand the religion of Islam as a map to um, getting through the difficulties of this life. And I think it it can reorient a person towards their deen to where they realize that the things that they think they're supposed to do or that are transactional can actually and should probably more uh, poignantly be transformational. That our approach to our religion should be about working on ourselves and developing ourselves, and that the work, you know, the, the ibadah that we do is really to work on ourselves. Not that it's necessarily doing something in a transaction with our Lord so that we can be in a certain place or a certain status, but that actually we have to take some self-responsibility uh, in doing the work of being in a state of Islam or being Muslim. That it's not something that you just sign up for and get your card as a Muslim, but that actually it's a state of being that you have to cultivate. And understanding that from the lens of psychology, I think, is a really important and useful way of um, highlighting the meaning of, of our religion. So my hope for the field of Islamic psychology is both to, to help break down that stigma of mental health in the community, in the Muslim community, so that people recognize and understand that there is an avenue that is within the Islamic paradigm that makes therapy or going to a therapist something that is, that is within the fold of Islam. And that by having an articulated model that is sort of approved and involves the scholars, the ulama, the imams, that it's something that more Muslims can have access to and feel comfortable doing that work on themselves.
And then also I think my, my own personal wider hope for the field is that it can uh, be a, a contribution of knowledge to, to the whole world and to the field of psychology. Because I, like my own journey in psychology, I actually found Islam as having the most articulated knowledge of this science of the soul that for me just highlighted um, psychology more in depth. And so just like now in the modern, in the contemporary psychology world, Buddhism has really contributed quite a lot to psychology. I think that there's a lot that the, the contemporary world of psychology can learn from the Islamic tradition. And I, my hope is that people can go to the bookshelves of the different theories of psychology to learn what, what is the sort of canon of the knowledge of psychology in the contemporary academy and see one of those theoretical frameworks is the, the book on Islamic psychology. Support the next generation of Muslim thinkers by donating today at cambridgemuslimcollege.ac.uk.